The basic principle is, I lend you money, and after an agreed upon period of time, you return it with interest. What are the economics lessons we can learn from Game of Thrones? That is what we are here to discuss today, specifically a little bit about loans, interest, debt collection, collateral, reputation, and, and a whole lot more, but a lot of it in revolving around loans. So my name is Matt Rosum, a professor of economics at Susquehanna University, and pleased to be joined again by Dan Bragan. Dan, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So Dan is an incoming PhD student at Clemson starting fall of 2024 and a recent graduate of Susquehanna. And Dan and I, along with a couple others, have put together the website Econ Thrones, Economics of Game of Thrones. So all of the clips you see today, you can find on that website. We're going to go through a few examples of clips that can help teach us. And we'll start with that right now. For years, I've heard that Littlefinger is a magician. Whenever the crown needs money, he rubs his hands together and poof, mountains of gold. Let me guess, he's not a magician. No. He's stealing it? Worse, he's borrowing it. What's wrong with that? We can't afford to pay it back, that's what's wrong with it. The crown owes millions to my father. Seeing as it's his grandson's ass on the throne, I imagine he'll forgive that debt. Forgive a debt, my father. A man of the world, you're strangely naive. I've never borrowed money before. I'm not clear on the rules. Well, <clears throat> the basic principle is I lend you money, and after an agreed upon period of time, you return it with interest. And what if I don't? Well, you have to. But what if I don't? This is why I don't lend you money. Anyway, it's not my father I'm worried about. It's the Iron Bank of Bravos. We owe them tens of millions. If we fail to repay these loans, the bank will fund our enemies. One way or another, they always get their gold back. Interesting first clip, Tyrion and Braun. Dan, what are, what are your first thoughts when you see that clip? My first thoughts are, perhaps I don't have many more thoughts to add. I, I think the clip does such a great job of of describing just the bare bones of how a loan works. You know, there's interest, you have to pay them back. If you don't pay back the people you borrowed from, they have means of getting that that money back regardless. But I, I think it's that clip is particularly important now with you see the rise of sort of like the MMT and you know, questioning of the, I guess, the economics behind the ability of the government to spend and borrow money or that limit exists. Uh, I, I think kind of getting down to the bare bones of a loan of how a loan works does shed some light on that process a little bit more yeah i agree i don't know of another clip maybe somebody watching could make a comment if you know of another clip that explains how loans work so well just bare bones just give somebody money they give it back but with some amount of extra money some interest included for that so that part to me is somewhat fascinating in that it could be used to quite frankly teach children how loans work the game of thrones probably isn't the best show <laughs> for children in general but the clip is good for that as you say i also think it's interesting to think about government borrowed money and there's interest on the amount that the government borrowed eventually that's either paid back or the interest charges accrue we're running into an interesting situation. I think neither major political party wants to address anything with the debt because, well, I would like to probably argue that they're responding to voters who aren't putting any spotlight on the national debt at the moment. And it's something that maybe won't be a huge issue this year, but coming down the road, if, if things don't change in pretty quickly, I think it will be an issue for the U.S. Yeah, I, mean, I think if we think within the context of Game of Thrones there as well, it is a kingdom of some sort. So the king is only held responsible to himself, essentially. So he can sort of act as he will, as he does, uh, borrow money to fund whatever feast he wants, whatever military adventure he wants. Whereas hopefully there's more checks and balances in a democratic, I guess, constitutional system like the United States. But does appear that even those institutions struggle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's move on to clip number two. 
the Iron Bank has called in one-tenth of the Crown's debt. Given the expense of rebuilding the Royal How much can the Crown afford? With winter coming, half what they ask? Less? You're the master of coin. How do we pay them? Well, House Tyrell could front the gold and the, the Crown would pay us back in time or I'd have words with my daughter. You've already given us too much. No, we must arrange better terms with the Iron Bank. So a loan is coming due. The Crown owes money. You know, their version of a national debt. I guess kingdom debt. I don't know the right phrasing for this. but And the bank wants one-tenth of the debt back. And immediately. The kingdom can only afford to pay half of it back. The plan is to renegotiate terms with the Iron Bank. How, how likely do we think this will be to succeed? Probably limitedly likely, considering there are, at this time in Game of Thrones, other threats to the thrones, other horses the banks can essentially back to, to get their money. But in another world where maybe there aren't as many alternatives to the crown, maybe this attempt to renegotiate is more successful because, at the end of the day, the bank does want their money back. And if the best way to ensure that they get their money back is to essentially refinance their loans, I mean, make the payment lower so they can they can keep up the payments, so the bank keeps getting money in, then maybe that's an alternative the bank and the kingdom can, can employ in this scenario. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's usually not good business for a bank to have a, a loan default, even if there's, even if it's collateralized, you know, where the bank has collateral yeah. backing it. Okay, maybe they could come out a little bit ahead, but there's certainly not a good PR value in the real world when, when that happens. And so banks would generally like to avoid that. So you could imagine some refinancing could take place, but they're in this strange world where they see this government has threats to it. And it seems like they're almost growing weary of, they're going to recall a tenth of it, starting to maybe think there's a little bit too much risk for for the Iron Bank of Bravos to have that much. Although the flip side is they are only recalling one-tenth of the debt. If if they do think it's a big threat, why not recall perhaps a little bit more? And I, I think even the, the refinancing aspect definitely brings me back to the COVID era when interest rates were so low and people were sort of refinancing all of their loans because interests were so good, but the the problems that come with refinancing and sort of the barriers to that, you can't refinance. I don't think you can refinance student loans, if I'm not mistaken. Or you may be in some circumstances, but it's interesting to see where you are able to refinance and when it would benefit fit you versus when yeah. it definitely isn't well, benefiting you. Well, you're not allowed to refinance student loans if if you happen to have, let's say your student loan interest rate was 6%. And a few years ago, the housing interest rate is 3%. If you had enough equity in your home and you could just refinance and pull the cash out, you could put that to pay off the student loans and it would be a form of arbitrage. But I don't know the specifics about student loan yeah. repayments enough to know when it could work well or when it wouldn't work well. It's an, it's an interesting side point though. Okay, let's move on to flip number three. Mod! Mud! 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 Ah. Right again! About the gold. Now gold! Now gold! Listen to me! Listen to me! Sometimes possession is an abstract concept. Ah. Ah. When they captured me, they took my purse, but the gold is still mine. Where? Where? I don't know where, but they free me. You want free? Go be free. Have you ever heard the phrase, rich as a Lannister? Of course you have. You're a smart man. You know who the Lannisters are. I am a Lannister. Tyrion, son of Tywin. And of course, you have also heard the phrase, a Lannister always pays his debts. If you deliver a message from me to Lady Erin, 
I will be in your debt. I will owe you gold. If you deliver the message, and I live, which I very much intend to do. What message? Tell her I wish to confess my crimes. Is it over? You don't fight with honor. No. He did. Now. Not this little man. This little man is going home. I believe you have something of mine. always pays his debts in some ways i think of the clips this is this might be my favorite in terms of talking about loans because Tyrion really capitalizes on his reputation and that he's a good credit risk and in that he's able to convince the guard to go ahead and relay a message when the guard really had no intention at the beginning of that to relay any sort of message. So I, I find that just fascinating. Now, within loans, it works a little bit different in, you know, if you have that good credit risk, you're more likely to get a loan or maybe you're more likely to get a favorable interest rate on the loan. But truly just think that's pretty fascinating that he capitalizes on his reputation as a good credit risk in that example. I think related to reputation, sort of one thing that Within a market, I think Adam Smith, even in the Wealth of Nations, talks of this, but the benefits of having a strong reputation in a market system and the, the material ways you are benefited by being an honorable, well, I guess in this case, perhaps an honorable butcher. But in this in this clip where the, the Lannister family does pay back their debts, they, they do have a lot of money, them being honorable in that sense benefits them in, in ways they can't even imagine going forward. And I think related to the market, businesses have stakes in being honorable and honest yeah yeah absolutely yeah, it goes beyond just loans and interest payments if a business has a good reputation customers may be more likely to use them in the future that maybe will be at least some, some subset of customers will be much more likely to frequent that business to give them future business the reputation has value Tyrion certainly couldn't have imagined the situation he found himself in, but the fact that they were known as good credit risk, saying paying back their debts, of course, some of the time it means, you know, if they're wronged, they're going to avenge the wrong, but taking it quite literally paying back the debts helped out Tyrion enormously. In the some consider usury distasteful, dishonorable, pure boxes, of course. And that we see eye to eye on this matter. Did you know that at one point Maegor III tried to outlaw it in the Seven Kingdoms? Wanted to arrest anyone caught charging interest and cut off both their hands. Most unfortunate for the Glovers. If a man charges no interest on a loan, then he has nothing to gain and everything to lose, so why chance it? Whereas the promise of reward makes a man willing to gamble. We are not gamblers here at the Iron Bank, Lord Tyrell. You are the world's best gamblers. And all those bets you won built this any initial comments from the fourth clip well, in that clip they they mentioned the history of uh, I, the seven kingdoms and these historical attempts to ban usury or, or or i guess interest in another sense and related to 
it's the human history in the real world, there have been plenty of attempts, sometimes with religious backing for religious reasons, to ban interest payments uh, and interest charges. Uh, so I, I think I think related to that, it's it's super interesting. I think the the gambling comment at the end that in the, the day, like they are they are trying to make a decision based off the best information that is well, maybe not the least risk averse, but the one that maximizes profits. I think that little quip at the end is also a great example of how not necessarily how world loans work, but sort of the idea behind why someone would loan out money. So I think it's fascinating the interest being viewed as repugnant. That's the Al Roth uh, Nobel Prize winner had a paper that I, I just loved and I'll still show in classes uh, called Repugnance Repugnance as a Constraint on Markets and the various things that were found repugnant over time or are found repugnant today. So there could be a legal market, but there isn't because it's outlawed. And interest was this one historically that has been outlawed, has been illegal in various places. There are still places of the world that would have it be, you know, have it illegal now. Kind of fascinating to think how the world would be different if interest indeed was illegal today. As I really like the comments, without the interest, why would anybody give out a loan? And I, I think there, there's a fair amount to that. We saw, so we saw four different clips here, loans, interest rates, good reputation, and how that can affect the ability to get credit, so to speak, from a prison guard. Fascinating Game of Thrones certainly is, well, it's a fictional land, but I might be one of the best shows ever for teaching some really interesting topics in economics that you just don't find anywhere else, including these four clips on interest rates, loans, a little bit on the national debt. But any any final thoughts or comments for the audience on the economic lessons we found here, Dan? I, I guess nothing specific. I just... I just really want to harp on the the first clip. I think it's just such a such a great explainer of loans, and I think it it goes to show what you were saying how how excellent Game of Thrones is at at yeah. showing these different economic ideas. Yeah, and that one actually might be okay to show your seven year old if you want to teach them on loans. I, I some of those clips probably with the you know sword fighting maybe not, but the. Fantastic clips for the economics educators out there. All of these clips are found on econthrones.com or on criticalcommons.org. Uh, you can even download them from Critical Commons if you're an economics educator and just integrate them right into your classroom if you're interested in that. But thank you to everybody for tuning in. This is part of the series that we're dropping each week, a new video on economic lessons from Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon in honor of House of the Dragon Season 2 being released throughout the summer. So look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.